Welcome back to the playlist on skin physiology and biochemistry. Um, in the last few videos, we've been talking a lot about melanocytes and how they synthesize a molecule known as melanin. And we talked about how melanin is really important for protection of the underlying tissue's DNA. And we talked about the mechanisms by which that happens. But in order for the melanocyte to synthesize more melanin, it has to get the signal from a peptide known as alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. And this is a hormone that is released from the anterior pituitary gland, although some, some uh, textbooks will now call this the adeno. This is the adeno hypothesis. This is one other name for the anterior pituitary gland. And alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone is released from that. And what this picture is essentially showing is it's showing, number one, the gene that alpha MSH comes from, but it's also showing a list of other proteins and peptides that are derived from this gene. So what is this gene? Well, this gene's name is proopiomelanocortin gene. Okay, and the protein product of, you know, what we're going to do essentially is we're going to take this gene right here and we're going to transcribe it. Okay, we talked about transcription in another video. And we're going to transcribe this gene into the messenger RNA. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to send that out into the cytosol where it can be picked up by ribosomes. And then um, the ribosomes are going to translate the mRNA ultimately into this protein right here, or this peptide, whatever you want to call it. So this peptide, labeled from N to C terminus, about 285 residues, this is the gene product or the protein product of the pro-opiomelanocortin gene. Okay? Now, what's important to realize about the pro-opiomelanocortin product is that it's going to be processed further by enzymes, meaning we're going to use a series of of acetyl transferases and proteases to clip this long peptide into individual fragments that each have their own function. So two of them that are important to note are the alpha MSH, which I already noted, and then also there's this ACTH. And what ACTH essentially is, is it's called adrenocorticotropic hormone. And what this essentially does, in short, is it will go to the zona fasciculata of the adrenal cortex and it will upregulate the enzymes that are involved in cortisol synthesis. So what you end up getting is an increase in cortisol released into the blood. Okay, But it turns out that that ACTH, that adrenocorticotropic hormone, can be processed further by another protease in which we ultimately will end up getting alpha MSH and another protein which we're not really concerned about called CLIP. Okay? And that will be processed further. We're not concerned about that here. What we're concerned about is the alpha MSH and how we get it. Now, I'm not completely in love with this picture because it leaves out a lot of important steps. So for the individual steps in alpha MSH synthesis, I'm going to use this picture right here. Now, what they're assuming in this picture is that, you know, you have your, you have your protein already. You know, over here, this is your N-terminus, this is your C-terminus of pro-opiomelanocortin. And what they're essentially going to show is they're going to show the series of steps on how you process pro-opiomelanocortin into alpha-MSH. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to use two enzymes. Okay, so what we're going to do is these two enzymes are going to be called prohormone convertases. Okay, and the abbreviation for prohormone convertase is PC, and there's two of them. Okay, so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this pro-opiomelanocortin ultimately at two spots. Okay, and these are the spots denoted by PC1, prohormone convertase 1. Okay, prohormone convertase 1 splits the pro-opiomelanocortin at those spots, and you end up with a fragment referred to as ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. So if we go back to this picture right here, one of the precursors to alpha MSH is adrenocorticotropic hormone, but it's not just one step as it's sort of elucidated there. It's actually multiple steps that we're going to need in order to get alpha MSH. Okay, so now what we're assuming is this whole piece right here. This is the adrenocorticotropic hormone. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to clip it. Okay. 
So the way we're going to clip it is we're going to use something called CPE or carboxypeptidase E. And you'll notice what carboxypeptidase E does is it's going to clip right here between this glycine and this lysine right here. And this series of basic residues right here that are part of ACTH, okay, they get clipped off. Okay, so they get clipped off and you end up with sort of um, an inactive version of alpha MSH. So this right here, this version is still inactive. We're going to have to do a few other things to make it active. Okay, so now we've clipped off this basic fragment right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use an enzyme called PAM. And PAM has a long fancy name and it's shown right here. The full name of this enzyme is called peptidylglycine alpha amidating monooxygenase. Now, this alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone that we have is 14 residues long. So I want to make that perfectly clear. This one up here that is inactive, this is 14 residues long. And it is inactive. Okay, we're going to have to do two transformations to it in order to make it active. Okay. Now, one thing before I go into the next uh, enzymatic step is I want to talk about the amino acid that's on the N-terminal side of this glycine that I circled in blue. And this amino acid that I'm talking about is a valine residue. Okay. So the amino acid that's directly on the N-terminal side of glycine is a valine. Okay. So I'm going to show you the mechanism of this next enzyme, which is called it's called peptidylglycine alpha amidating monooxygenase. That's this enzyme right here. And to understand that this right here, essentially, let me let me go ahead and show you down here. OK, this right here, this is the glycine. So this part right here, this is this is the glycine. OK, and they sort of denote this as being the peptide over here. And the reason they do that is because this particular enzyme reacts with more than just inactive alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone but in the context of this particular enzyme the amino acid that's over on this side is that valine okay and then of course this is the glycine because I have two hydrogens right here right that hydrogen is on the alpha carbon of glycine and the R group is also a hydrogen so that's the glycine residue so we have valine and glycine okay now this particular enzyme uh, peptidyl glycine alpha amidating monooxygenase or PAM is dependent on vitamin C and vitamin C's other name that we typically refer to it as is L-ascorbate. Okay, so this is a copper dependent enzyme. It's a copper dependent enzyme and it's ascorbate dependent. Now, the monooxygenase in the name denotes the fact that we're going to monooxygenate the alpha carbon of glycine. So remember that this carbon right here this is the alpha carbon of glycine, right? And notice what we did is we essentially made a hydroxyl group on that alpha carbon, okay? Now what we're going to do essentially in the next mechanistic step is we're essentially going to do a carbonyl forming reaction, okay? And we're gonna get two things out of it. Number one, we're gonna get a glyoxylate out of it, which will react in another pathway to get rid of that. You don't want a lot of glyoxylate floating around. And the end result is we're going to get an amidated peptide. That's very important. Now, it might not make a lot of sense right now, but I'm going to elucidate it to you, showing you the actual mechanism once we get the hydroxyl group on there. So this is, this is the second half of the mechanism of peptidylglycine alpha amidating monooxygenase. So notice, we're assuming that this hydroxyl group has already been added in the ascorbate dependent monooxygenation. So this right here, this is the alpha carbon of the glycine. And what we're assuming is, is over on this side, the immediate amino acid to the N-terminal side of the glycine. This is, of course, our valine residue. Okay, And then the rest of the chain extends that way towards the left. Well, what's going to happen in the active site, I'll do the mechanistic steps in green, there's going to be a base, which of course is an amino acid, and the base is going to deprotonate this hydroxyl group, okay, and that's going to generate a lone pair and a negative charge on this oxygen of the hydroxyl group. And so what that generates is an alkoxide, which is shown right here. So this functional group right here, this is our alkoxide. And what the alkoxide can essentially do is it can collapse down, okay? So in other words, what can happen is this carbonyl can form right here, okay? Now, if nothing else happened, you'd have carbon with five bonds, and that can't be the case. So what ends up having to happen is this bond right here, which I'm going to denote in yellow, 
this bond breaks. This is this carbon nitrogen bond breaks. And so the result is that this these electrons come out and abstract this hydrogen from that base in the active site. Okay. Now notice what that does. Notice that uh, you have this this amidated. So this is the amide group I was talking about. This is the amidated peptide. If I were to actually draw this out, let me do it. Okay, what you would essentially see is so here is here is the N-terminal side of the valine. So here's valine right there. There's the R group of valine. And then you have this amide at the end. Okay, so what we did is we used a carbonyl formation mechanism to get rid of the glyoxylate group. Okay, so what we also get is this right here. So this structure right here, this guy is glyoxylate. In another video, we'll look at what happens to glyoxylate. You don't want a lot of that around, so you get rid of it in a catabolic mechanism. But then this right here, this is the valine at the end now, and it's amidated, right? Because if you if you if you um, extend this chain over here, you'll eventually get to the N terminus over here. But it's a little strange because if you go over to this side, notice that. Notice that you essentially end in a nitrogen. So, but this is not the N terminus. This is actually the C terminus because this right here, it was, it would be a carboxyl group, but essentially the nitrogen is left over from the N terminal side of the glycine. Okay, so this technically this is, this is the C terminal side of the inactive alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. It's the C terminal side of MSH or alpha MSH, the C-terminal side, but it's amidated, okay? And hopefully when I showed you that mechanism, it made a little bit of sense. And this was all catalyzed by peptidylglycine alpha amidating monooxygenase, okay, PAM. So that was this enzyme right here. Now what we have is something called a desacetyl alpha MSH. And all that means is that it's without an acetyl group. And the question is, where is it going to acetylate? Well, it's actually going to acetylate on the N-terminal side. So notice, I'll do this in orange, on, this, on the N-terminal side, we have this critical serine residue that we have to acetylate. So the enzyme, N-acetyltransferase, so this enzyme right here, NAT, N-acetyltransferase, is literally going to acetylate that serine residue. So in other words, if you were looking at what this would look like, so what you would have essentially at the end is you would start with something that looked like this. So once again, you would have your N terminus. If you had serine, the R group is a hydroxymethyl group. And then you'd have your C terminal side of the serine that's tied up in a peptide bond, right? And then you'd go to whatever the next residue was, which in this case is a tyrosine, okay? But whenever I do the N acetyl transferase activity, okay, I'm going to use essentially I'm going to use acetyl-CoA as the acetyl donor. So there's my acetyl group, this right here. This is the acetyl group. And I'm going to transfer that acetyl group to the N-terminal side of serine. So what I'm essentially going to get is something like this. So here is now the acetyl group attached to the N-terminal side. And then I have my serine R group. And then, of course, I have the C-terminal side of the serine that's now tied up in a peptide bond in alpha MSH. So this is essentially right here. This is the N-acetyl group right there. And, of course, in the process, I get out coenzyme A. Okay. Once I do that to that serine residue, once I acetylate the N-terminal side of it, what I end up getting is this guy right here, which is mature alpha MSH. And this guy is active. So when, whenever you're talking about MSH acting on the melanocyte in your skin, it's this particular peptide that does that. Okay. And I want to be perfectly clear about this because this is a really important and subtle point. Okay. I think we're all well aware at this point that MSH is released by the anterior pituitary gland. Okay. So these processes of processing ACTH and getting it down to alpha MSH, this occurs in the adeno, this occurs in the adeno hypothesis or the anterior pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland. Okay, so in other words, the anterior pituitary would get the stimulus from the hypothalamus, um, which is ultimately going to come from corticotropin releasing hormone, right? So corticotropin releasing hormone causes the anterior pituitary to synthesize ACTH, right? 
and then ACTH will get processed to alpha MSH. Okay, and then the alpha MSH is going to get released into the blood because it's a tropic hormone, and it's going to go to the melanocyte. And if you did something like tanning, it's going to cause an increase in melanin synthesis. And we'll look to see how that happens probably in the next video. Okay, but now here's another really important point. Okay, if you have a way to synthesize a hormone, you do not want that hormone acting indefinitely on target cells. So you have to have a way to catabolize the hormone. And in some cases, um, hormones get you know, metabolized by P450, sulfotransferases, glucuronosyl transferases in your typical um, hormone metabolism or neurotransmitter metabolism. Maybe it has a catabolic pathway to put into the TCA cycle like GABA. Okay, but in the case of peptides, usually what catabolize those are proteases. Okay, so it turns out there's a protease called proleal carboxypeptidase. Okay, and this is going to act on mature alpha MSH. And I'm going to show you which bond it splits. It's essentially going to split this bond right here. So notice we have this amidated valine at the um, C terminal side of the peptide. And it's going to split this. Let me redo that. It's going to split this bond right here between the proline and the valine. So notice now the C-terminal side, so this is the C-terminal side, is now a proline. And it turns out that that is enough to make alpha MSH inactive. And then there's some other proteases that will hydrolyze it apart from there into individual amino acids. Okay, But I just want to make you aware that proleal carboxypeptidase is a protease that is going to inactivate mature alpha MSH. If you have a way to make something, you have a way to either catabolize it, inactivate it, and then excrete it. Okay, so hopefully this synthesis of alpha MSH and its catabolism made a little bit of sense. In the next video, we're going to go over how it relates to the melanocyte and the melanocyte function. See you in the next video.